Hey guys, uh, this is going to be the uh, one where I explain parody bits. This is the second, uh, not the second part, but the second version of my uh, raid level explanation. I explain, I have a basic explanation of all the raid levels. Uh, 0, 1, 5, 6, 10, and raid 50. And then uh, this is going to explain uh, raid 5 which is probably the most advanced one. Then there's Raid 6, which is, I guess, you could say a little bit more advanced than Raid 5, but it's nothing more than an extra parody bit. So it's nothing more, it's just an additional Raid 5 parody bit. Nothing fancy going there, but... So I'll explain how it works. This is going to be for Raid 5. So... In RAID 5, I'm gonna, I have this is going to be our data that we're dealing with here. Let's just say this is your bit of data that you're writing to these hard drives. So now, a lot of people say this that, and this could be said that you can write a zero to this drive, a one to this drive, and a, the one goes to this drive, and you just keep going back and forth. But actually, what you have is called stripe sizes, and you can actually set this when you're setting your RAID. So let's just say each one of these is a is a, a byte of data or a bit of data. Say each one's a bit of da data, and you break it into pieces like this. So this would be a stripe. This would be a stripe. There's a glare. Anyways, there's a stripe, and then there's a stripe. And you can set the sizes that it breaks these into stripes. Um, I know in the and I have I have the Power Edge servers they'll let you set the stripe sizes and in a lot of raid controllers in the advanced settings you can set how often it breaks up the data between the three drives it's not actually sending byte for byte between the drives it's sending packets of bytes from drive to drive to drive so it's actually sending and you can set how big those packets are so you could say it's 64 kilobytes of data or kilobits of data from this to this drive and then once you send 64 kilobits to this drive go to this one then 64 to this one it's not actually sending byte for byte to drive that's an easy way to explain it but actually in in a real RAID controller normally you would set the stripe size to how big you want it to be and it would divide up the data into blocks like this and send it to each hard drive so let's just say uh, you're dividing your data and one of them is going to go to here, the next bit of data is going to go to here, and then the last bit is going to go to here. Now keep in mind, let's just say this is a picture. Let's say this is a picture on your hard disks. Now I know this is nothing near what a picture would look like, but uh, let's just say this is a, a picture that you stored on your hard disks and this is the data to the picture. So what it's going to do is it's going to break up the strings of data to that picture into segments that are however big your your stripe sizes are now this could go on again here too you could have another three sets if it's a really high definition picture and then it'll just go over again so then, then the next one will go to here to here and it just keeps going on and on but let's just say this is a picture and it's going to divide the data into three parts onto your hard disks so one third of it's going to go here the next third here and the next third here so now you have the data on three different hard disks and now you have you have to have all three hard disks to get that data back so this is pretty much RAID 0 right here this is RAID 0 you're dividing the data and putting bits of it onto each hard drive so there's no redundancy here but now as it does it it makes parity bits between the drives so there's a parity bit between this drive this drive this drive, this drive, and then these two outer drives. So, and those those parity bits get stored on the hard drive as well. So, let's just say between this drive and this drive, we'll draw this out. We have zero, 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 or sorry, one, zero, one, one, and zero, zero. So, I did that just by bringing these down, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, and 0, 0. So that's between these two drives. So this is the data stored on this drive, and this is the data stored on this drive. So now you're going to have a parity bit stored on these drives. So what it does is it says if these two bits are the same, you're going to have a 0 parity bit. 
and if these two bits are different like this you're gonna have a one parity bit and this is these are the same bits so this is a zero and this is a zero and now it stores this line of data onto the hard drives onto both hard drives so now these hard drives have the original data and they have a parity bit data so now if let's just say they both have the parity bit data right so this hard drive crashes again I'm gonna get into this hard drive in a minute uh, we haven't forgot about that one but I'm just gonna keep it simple for now and explain just part of the drive so let's just say this drive crashes or this drive crashes well they both have a copy of the parity bits on them and they both have their own data so let's just say this drive crashes boom your data is wiped out so now there's this drive is broken but this drive has the bits that it had on it right and it has those parity bits they all the drives have parity bits on them but it doesn't have the data that this drive had but because it has the parity bits it knows what this drive was going to have so it has its zero bit here and it has the parity bit of zero but because of the parity bit is zero that means that the other bit matched it so it was a, a zero and because the parity bit here is a one it knows that it was the opposite bit so it had to be a zero on this drive and because this one's a zero it had to be a one and this is a zero it had to be a zero so it knows what data was supposed to be on this drive so as soon as you put a new hard drive in it can take the parity bits that were on this drive and the original data that was on this drive and use it to rewrite the data to this drive then it also makes another copy and puts it back onto the drive it makes a copy of the parity bits and puts it back on the drive and same thing would happen if this drive crashed you know these bits would go out and then it use this hard drive would use the parity bits here and its original data to restore it so you'd have a zero so you'd have zero zero one zero um, one one and zero zero obviously if the two drives crashed you would lose all the parity bits between the two drives and the original data so you'd be uh, out of luck so you wouldn't it wouldn't work anymore now you also have the same thing going on here just between these two drives so you have parity bits here so you have a zero and a one a zero and a one a one and a one and a zero and a zero I think I did that right yeah so um then you have the parity bits between these two drives I'm losing it here and then this one this one so then again there's they're different so you're gonna have a one a one zero and a zero and same th concept here if either one of these two drives crashes now um, they both have the copy of the parity bits. So this one has a copy of these parity bits, and so does this one. This one doesn't need a copy of these parity bits over here because th these parity bits are between these two drives. You store parity bits between the two drives. So this set of parity bits is going to be stored in this one and this one. So if either one of these two drives crashes, it'll use the original data and these parity bits. If either one of these two drives crashes now, it's going to use the data between the two drives and the parity bits. So now what's left is the two outer drives. So then you have another set of parity bits and you have data stored between the two outer drives too. So then you have 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and 0, 0. So then you have parity bits stored between these two drives and the data stored between those two drives. So it's it's distributed evenly throughout all the drives. They all get even amount of parity bits. They all get even amount of data. And that's how it works. And then this would equal, 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 uh, zero, zero, one, zero. So let me just erase this real quick now we're excluding the middle drive and if either of these two drives crash so let's just say this one goes down they both have a copy of the parity bits between the two drives the two outer drives have the same parity bit copy so it knows that if this drive here goes dead it's gonna have the original data from this drive and the parity bits so it's gonna know 
0, they were the same. 1, this was the opposite. 0, this was a 1, and 0, this was a, a 0. So it's going to know the data that was on this hard drive, and as soon as you put a new hard drive in there, you click reconstruct, it uses the parity bits and the data from whichever hard drives it needed to, to reconstruct this drive. So that's pretty much it for how RAID 5 works. RAID 6 is the same thing, except you just have an extra set of parity bits. Um, it's a little harder to explain, it gets a lot more complicated than I, I don't know, it's hard to explain, but it's nothing more complicated than, it's just really hard to draw out how it's distributed, but it's nothing more complicated than an extra line of parity bits, and it shares them between the, the drives, and since you have an extra line of parity bits, it, it, it makes copies of the bits twice, so you have two times the redundancy, you can lose two drives. So for each set of parity bits you have, that's meaning you can lose one drive for each set of parity bits you have. Um, so that's pretty much it for how the RAID 5 parity bits work. It just makes a complement, it uses the complementary data and the parity bits to restore the old hard drive that crashed. And that's pretty much it. So if you guys like the video, um, give it a thumbs up. If you guys have any more questions or anything you guys want to know about this or any other RAID level or anything about stuff like this, you can send me a comment, an inbox, email, or go to my forum that is not up right now, but it's going to be in a couple more days, hopefully, or probably by tomorrow. You can hear the servers going in my closet right now. Um, but I just got to get the domain for it, uh, techgeekforums.com. Um, so... If you guys like the video, of course, give it a thumbs up. If you guys like my videos, uh, subscribe. And uh, have a good one, guys.